Dr. Nebert, you've you've gone through a massive transformation since I've known you. It's yes. been astounding. And the most important thing for me is it's been ongoing. Yes. Easy to do in a short period of time, but the consistency and the longitudinality of it, and it's getting better and better. Yes. Two questions for you. What, is, what changes have you personally undergone as a human being? Mm-hmm. And how has that impacted and affected your practice as a practicing cardiologist? Okay. Uh, what changes have I um, undergone? Um, I've, um, over, over the last uh, two and a half years, I've lost 70 pounds since I've been low carb. Um, uh, I had previously been up. Uh, another 20 pounds and I had done protein sparing modified fasts and dropped down to uh, to do 60 and then went back up again but I was uh, so it's a total of 90 pounds from my my highest but right. from when I started uh, it um, it's been 70 pounds that was rapid at first and then slower and then I had all the the situations that have occurred from the, the check mark type of uh, a decrease in, in, in uh, my weight to um, uh, a, Issues with uh, with sleep, there's got better, uh, and uh, I, I guess the, uh, the the big thing is when I started to lose weight rather quickly, and then when I was here last year, I was about um, about thirty five pounds still heavier than, than now, and I've got about thirty pounds to go back to my Air Force weight. Uh, that I was um, people were noticing a lot of things, and I've had people that uh, my patients are saying, "Well, what's going on?" I, and I leave the old fat picture up uh, in, mm-hmm. in, in the office. Yeah, it's pretty it's, astounding. It's pretty impressive. Uh, uh, so when people, do you have cancer? Yeah. And one person asked me that. HIV and cancer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, and uh, I said, no, I just stopped eating. Like you did? Like, no, no, I'm a low carb. And then I put together a, a nice packet uh, of about eight pages combined things from, from you, from Eric, from a number of other people, uh, low carb down under. I, and and I'll give them uh, my. So you've created your own handout of my hey, own this is what out. I'm doing. Uh, yes, and, wow. and I'll do that. And then a lot of people will ask me, uh, and but I, I now start talking with people because some people were afraid to say anything because oh no something's wrong and and I injured my leg. So I've actually done this without exercise. Right, right. Uh, so I'm I'm working with a cane for now, but that should hopefully uh, rent, uh, be eliminated in a not too distant future. Yeah. But that's that's an important point. Is that. While well, exercise, you are more physically active. You're more mobile yes. because oh, you're less absolutely. heavy. But you're not intentionally exercising. Right. So this is the metabolic I'm transformation. Mm-hmm. And in terms of medication and that kind of thing? Uh, I'm really not on anything but Flonase. What were you on before? Well, uh, I, I had metabolic syndrome. I had hypertension. Uh, and... Um, uh, my um and yeah I, I took statins and I'm I'm really very cautious about the, the on there but I simply say that I feel that my lipids are significantly better and since I went on only as an N of one experiment primary prevention I feel my lipids are sufficiently good enough that for me with no uh, documented coronary disease and that's the key thing is that your risk is low right either way. Yes, that I don't think adding more medications is necessarily going to be helpful. So, are you? Do you take any anticoagulation? Um, no, I have been on an eighty-one milligram aspirin. Um, I'm I'm off of that right now, uh, and like I said, I'll use Flonase for for my for my allergies. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Wonderful. And um, my blood pressure is run between one hundred to one hundred and ten systolic over seventies. Uh, and uh, that's where it was when I was in college and med school. Let me ask you a question. You yeah. mentioned that you had hypertension. We've talked about that in a previous segment. Right. D- d- have you ever had an echo? Yes. Have you had a recent an echo recently? Um, not within the last couple of months. D- did you has your echo changed at all? Yes. In what way? It's changed. Better. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, okay, I'll give you. I'll give you that. So, so because I know this is my private medical stuff that's going. I understand you. No, but, of right, I understand that. And really, what what it wasn't about uh, uh, promulgating anything. But the question is, can your heart improve as you improve your metabolic risk? Absolutely. And and you are saying that yes, you have documentation to say that your heart has improved. Yes. From mm-hmm. which is a big deal because you're right. you're obviously off your hyper, antihypertensive medication. Right. So as your blood pressure gets better, mm-hmm. because you've improved your metabolic state and you've lost weight, and I will 
give both of those equal right. weight, um, your heart is improved. Mm-hmm. Not and my just A1C is 5.3. Right. So and but, I all of those things. Use and you've my got Dexcom. Your, your Dexcom. So you're monitoring, you're managing, but the, the improvement in your cardiovascular, uh, 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 really anatomy and function is a big deal. Mm-hmm. And yet you are still able to get your blood pressure up slightly and your heart rate up slightly yes. when you need to. Yes. Wonderful. And why do you think that happened? Because I was most likely um, insulin resistant from the time uh, I was in, I won't say college, but medical school, when we first started checking our, our, our lipids. And uh, I was running uh, LDLs in the 130s and, and HDLs in the low 40s. But, but my triglycerides were in the 160s. And I couldn't mm. figure that one out. I said, I must have eaten too many eggs. Uh, and uh, so I, I think that it was probably by that time starting insulin resistance was starting. But you're attributing to this to insulin resistance despite the fact that you've lost about 90 pounds. Right. So it's well, not I, the I weight. Because oh, a lot I, of people say that I was happened because you lost weight. I was, when I had those lipids and I was 25 years old, I weighed 160. So I'm still um, 30-some pounds more than I was then. then. Yeah. Uh, but my lipids are better than they were when I was 25. Uh, so, uh, and, and well, 30 be- pounds less. Better, better is a... There's a difference of opinion where they're better okay. or not. My triglycerides are lower than they've ever been. I don't think anybody's going to argue with that. Uh, yeah. As a cardiologist, yeah. what... Are your ideal? Forget about the metabolic side. What are your ideal triglyceride numbers? Just triglycerides. Triglycerides, preferably equal to the HDL. Okay, so I use seventy-five. Yeah. So you, you want that? Un- to un- we definitely yeah. want it under. And there's 100. no ambiguity in cardiology. There's no ambiguity about that. Am I yeah. right? Yeah. No, that's that's correct. It's it's good to have triglycerides under a hundred, and it's good to have HDL over fifty. That, that's mm-hmm. that's absolutely agreed upon in cardiology. Right. Uh, the, the issue is LDL and ApoB. Okay. And, and those are, are, are the big areas of, uh, of that. And the contentious. I'm, I don't want to get contentious with it, but I, I, it's I nice that there's synergy with HDL and, and... Yes. And the one that they don't ever really consider very much is VLDL. Yeah. And I didn't pay attention to it until I started following you. And I, I understood the mechanism beforehand, but, but I didn't really understand the mechanism. Mm-hmm. And, and what is your attitude, because again, a lot of the advice we get commonly from cardiology is reduced salt, reduced fat. What is, your, what is your approach to that in your own life and with respect to your patients now? Well, in my own life, my, 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 my mid-levels, my nurse practitioners uh, and my PA sort of laugh because I've got a nice um, um, shaker of salt. Uh, a clear one that's my uh, that, that is a Himalayan red salt. Now I don't mm. have Redmond's, yeah. uh, but I, actually that Himalayan salt tastes really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I came off the last of my blood pressure medicines a while back. It took. I was surprised how long it took for. Uh, it does it, take time. Yeah, yes. for with yeah. insulin resistance. And yes. then, I mean, I was uh, I was hypotensive for a little while, and then a couple of days later, boom, I was perfectly fine. But I always was having salt, and on my fast days, I'll have two bouillon cubes. Uh, so I'll, I'll make sure about that. Uh, and uh, so I, I noticed that no pedal edema. Uh, well, isn't it, let me say, isn't it true that cardiologists focus very heavily on salt reduction yes. because they don't focus at all on glucose reduction? And both are hygroscopic to the same yes. extent. Mm-hmm. Whereas on the ketogenic side, we focus on the sugar and right. therefore you need right. the salt. Right. Well, I differentiate with my patients. As, uh, and when it comes to what should I do about salt? Like, well, that depends. Are you on a standard American diet? If you're on a standard American diet, the standard is that we... You don't want re- both. We, 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 we reduce your salt intake. It will, if you're in heart failure, you have the diagnosis, you have hypertension, we need to reduce your salt as long as you're on a standard American high-carb diet. If you choose to be on a low-carbohydrate diet, we will be able to probably add salt at some point. But if you truly restrict it, then we're going to, first thing is we're going to have to cut back on some of your diuretics. Uh, so it, it depends on what time. This is, I'll tell them, this is what a low-carb diet is. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll, we start with less than 50 grams a day. And sometimes you have to go. I had to go to 20. I really had to yeah. go low. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and that's you and I are both obesogenic. Yes. So uh, we, we are, I mean, we don't socially distance from a donut. We're gaining weight. Right. 
Oh, yeah, that, 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 that's a joke I have with with one of my partners. Is here, David, have a Farsiga and a donut. <laughs> but, uh, but, in, but in all seriousness, uh, we do share decision making. So mm-hmm. if, if you are interested in trying this, and I tell them I'm actually a rather freshly minted metabolic health practitioner. Right. Uh, and, um, but I've been doing this for a few years now. And you've got uh, the story to tell. Yes. You are the evidence. So, so, so we, we discuss the options. And there's a lot of people that can't give up their grits. Of course. And you know what? Look, we're all going to die. Yes. How we get there is our choice. Mm-hmm. I can choose to take a statin or not take a statin. I can mm-hmm. choose to not eat carbohydrates or not. That's my choice. Right. But I need the information on both sides of the equation to make the best decision for myself. Yes. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we're prevented as lay people of having all the information we need to make right. the right decision. Right. I'm going to make one more uh, comment yeah. before we get short on, on, on disk space here, uh, is that I, I really need to, to, to let you and Eric Westman know, you both have been my mentors. Uh, I have learned a tremendous amount from both of you over the last few years, I like to say. When I watch your talks, it's like my first two years of medical school. When I watch his talks, it's like the second two years of medical school, so I'm back in school again. And I really didn't realize how much I didn't know. And it is something that is so... Um, I didn't think at my age that I would have such epiphanies on and things. There's so many things we can talk about in the future, but I will say one thing to one other person who I can actually safely say saved my life, and that's Nina Teichholz. Mm-hmm. I told her that last year when I met her. She didn't believe me. Uh, she I, wrote The Big Fat Lie. She wrote The Big Fat Lie, and, that, and I accidentally stumbled across it. I was looking up a cardiologist whose name was very similar to hers, and then I saw the book, and I'm like, wait a second, that's strange. And then I looked, and, and, I, and there was a next on, on Google was uh, the YouTube from the Cato Institute talk. So I watched the Cato Institute talk, and then it was, oh my God, this is all starting to make sense. Because all doctors have a, a I'll say, a, a bundle of things they don't understand and want to understand. Uh, with me, it was diabetes, hypertension, gout, asthma, and obesity. I didn't realize they were all basically mm, a manifestation of one yeah. disease. They're the consequences. And, and when I saw that... But I, you were inquisitive about it. Mm-hmm. If you don't have an open mind, you're not going to see that. You're going to pass by it. Mm-hmm. And, and that's... I, I really am I'm humbled by what you said, especially for someone that's as highly trained as you are. Mm-hmm. It really is humbling. But Well, EPs are just as arrogant as surgeons. Well, exactly right. Cardiologists, no more so. Cardiologists, <laughs> the only ones that are the worst are the CV surgeons. Mm-hmm. But, but, um, and I worked with Chris Barnard, uh, so doesn't surprise me. Yes, um, but but I really am. You know, when you and I talk, I've always got to be very super cautious about your level of knowledge, your level of understanding, mm-hmm. and yet, and I, I I'm. I have that imposter syndrome tremendously self-doubt. Mm-hmm. Yes. And, and yet your results have just reinforced. Mm-hmm. If someone like you, uh, if someone like Phil, Avita, yes. folks that are entrenched in what I believe the wrong direction mm-hmm. have been able with caution and with science to be able to, to mm-hmm. change your perspective. Uh, um, Art Agatson did the same thing. Yeah. He says just bastions of leadership because you're changing yourself but also changing the narrative in your own practice mm-hmm. and in the cardiology space which is only going to better our patients mm-hmm. so it, it really is very very impressive as a journey yeah well as my journey continues i'll be glad to talk to you again next year or whenever and we'll give catch you up. more uh more information i really appreciate this this is wonderful mm-hmm.